And we're starting with uh, continuous coverage uh, on what happened in London near Westminster. Two people have lost their lives in the attack. Uh, an attacker stabbed a police officer inside the security cordon uh, outside uh, at, at uh, the British Parliament and uh, was subsequently shot at by police officers. He's now under custody, according to some reports. And the police officer, uh, by all accounts, is... Uh, is safe. Uh, he's getting medical atten uh, attention. We understand. We saw the images of him being taken away by, uh, by paramedics. And this image on your screen is of a car crashing into uh, the railings outside uh, the Parliament House. Uh, and uh, it left at least 12 people injured, two of whom have succumbed to their injuries. We do not know if these two attacks are coordinated. The police giving very little. Absolutely. Still a lot of unknowns at this hour about happening about two and a half hours ago in London. A terror attack according to the Metropolitan Police there. Police as well uh, cordoning off that area. Heavy police presence there. Lots of ambulances as emergency crews deal with the victims on what is happening there. On the one year anniversary in fact of the Brussels terror attack. There was also another separate situation that took place where a car rammed down Westminster Bridge and dozens were hurt in that situation. Uh, quite the scene playing out in terror in the uh, uh, capital there in London. Uh, right as many people head home, a busy traffic uh, time. Many people, many of those parliament members locked up inside the House of Commons as the parliament session uh, halted. Theresa May, Britain's prime minister, whisked away as well. Uh, quite the scene happening there. Still no word on the suspect, no word on the motive. But what we do know is a man wielding a knife entered the House of Commons. Uh, he then uh, uh, was uh, stabbed a police officer. Apparently, police then firing a shot, uh, dozens of shot, in fact, uh, fired within that area. And then similarly, that car crashing in. No word of those are connected. Let's now go to uh, London. We have uh, Joel Whitaker, security analyst, uh, uh, standing by to provide us the very latest. Joel, thanks again for joining us. Uh, uh, quite the scene playing out there. Tense moments there. Typically explain what happens uh, in a situation like this. Police train and train for events like this, but uh, uh, now their training is really put to the test. Yeah, police train a lot. And in fact, they were training just this weekend in London for a terrorist incident on the river, uh, which is quite, it's quite fortuitous uh, considering how close to the river this incident occurred. Um, you know, they, they plan for these situations. They plan for attacks, particularly for terrorist attacks. Um, but no plan survives sort of first contact with the enemy is what you would say in, in security forces. And so it's, it's tough. It's tough to uh, be able to, um, it's tough to be able to plan comprehensively because you never really know what the threat will be you have a general idea you can look at past threats but you never really know what the new threat will be and certainly if it was a terrorist attack certainly somebody driving a car into people on the Westminster Bridge it's not new it happened in the south of France uh, but it's certainly new for London so therefore it's very tough to deal with that uh, however where uh, the security services will um, benefit from their training, from their planning, will be in their speed of reaction. And so how quickly they were able to contain the threat, how quickly they were able to look after injured people. Right. And among the injured could be three French school kids. The French Prime Minister has confirmed uh, that three students uh, who were on, on a trip to London along with their teacher are among those who sustained injuries and uh, they may be they may be very severely injured, according to the initial reports that are coming in. Uh, as we see the situation developing and the latest images coming out, uh, this area is under lockdown, of course. The police, Joel, saying that there will be many more officers stationed across the city of London as they carry on this investigation. There are MPs, 400-odd uh, MPs, who are, uh, who are locked up inside uh, the Commons chamber. There are people... Uh, who are, who are trapped in the London Eye in those pods. So this is a very, very dramatic situation that is unfolding in, in, in a manner of speaking. What would typically be the police's first priority and, and how do they go about this? When do they declare that this is safe? Because this is an ongoing investigation which could take days. So when is it that they come out and say, yes, people who've been in their offices or in specific buildings can, can go about their business and it's safe to come out? Yeah, and a priority of the security services, and that includes the British police, will be to protect life, to ensure that no further loss of life or injury occur to the best of their ability. And so to do that, in order to accomplish that, they will try to cordon and close down key areas. And we've seen this, you've just described this, the parliament being closed and partly evacuated. 
uh, which is what they will do in, in areas wherever they, there is a, a terrorist incident. They will attempt to cordon uh, and contain it. Um, so, so that's what they will do to try to prevent further lo loss of life. Uh, Joel, really quickly as well, I uh, wanted also to bring you up to speed. I know we've been talking about this all evening long. Uh, many areas around that uh, spot are very popular with tourists. Uh, looking at some of those images there with police and patients being escorted uh, into ambulances. Westminster Bridge, all entries to Parliament Square, uh, Northumberland Avenue, the mall, all closed. Many of those train stations in and around that area. Lambeth Bridge, Westminster Bridge, Parliament Square, Whitehall, Victoria Street, the junction up to Broadway and Victoria Embankment. All of those areas that shut down at this point. Uh, many of the roads in and around that area also shut down. Scotland Yard police, in fact, making a statement saying that is really because they want to make sure that police and uh, first responders can get to the scene, treat those victims and whisk them away. In fact, London's ambulance said they've treated at least 10 patients so far and put many of the hospitals in and around that area in high alert as they deal with this. Uh, they've also escalated and alerted London's air ambulance and the hazardous area response team working as quickly to deal with the uh, situation there. Uh, Joel, you've dealt with situations like this in the past as a security analyst. Typically, why are train stations uh, sort of shut down or uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, points that uh, authorities decide to cordon off given uh, that there could be, you know, many people trying to get in and out of that area, especially with this uh, heavy rush hour in London? Yeah, absolutely. And that, again, it, well, that is what makes it a key target. And so... Um, in the after an incident, it could be that uh, an area of where an ambulance is going to turn up, where security services will arrive to deal with the casualties, that could be an area where a terrorist uh, would plant a bomb, and what we, we call that a secondary. Well, so might be a, um, a transport hub like a railway station. If you look at the large railway stations within London, Paddington, King's Cross would be two key ones. Uh, they get huge volumes of traffic of people. Uh, that would be a perfect place to set off a device, let's say, for a terrorist organization. And so that's why you see the security services being incredibly cautious, not always closing them down, but certainly swamping those areas with lots of manpower uh, so they get good observation in that area. And also don't forget that um, in the event of a larger terrorist attack uh, where people may, where a terrorist may, may try to escape, um, then, of course, uh, the, the security services will want to keep their eyes on to monitor transport hubs in the event of you know catching catching a suspect right uh, this is an unfolding situation and for those of our viewers just joining us uh, uh, there were two incidents uh, on your screen uh, images of people uh, running to safety right after gunshots at least 12 of them were heard uh, inside the security perimeter of uh, the parliament buildings an officer was stabbed the alleged assailant shot at by armed police there were also photographs and videos of a number of casualties on the westminster bridge right next to the parliament buildings who had apparently been struck by a car and joel as we look at the sequence of events and with the police giving away very little at this point uh, there are some who who are already saying that this car may may have been on its way to this the same side this is these two areas are very close together, and uh, it would be too much of a coincidence if there were two lone wolf attacks taking place in the same area at the same time. Yeah, I think time will give clarity on this issue, and, uh, and I'm sure that the security services are working hard to establish exactly what went on, whether it was a terrorist organization or whether it was a lone wolf attack. Uh, but, but whatever the outcome is, is not great because in human, you know, a human life uh, or human lives potentially have been lost uh, in this situation, whether it was a lone wolf attack or whether it was a coordinated terrorist attack. Uh, and of course, the, the immediate the immediate thoughts go to those who have been uh, who have been killed or, and injured in this in this attack. Joel, really quickly with regards to this as well, uh, given what is happening there, sort of the the brinks of the amount of a. Uh, uh, situations that have unfolded in Europe over the past uh, uh, 18 months or so, back in November 2015, sort of laying out the timeline. November 2015, the Paris attacks, the Bataclan, what happened there, 130 people or so were killed with a coordinated terror blast. Then exactly a year ago, March 22nd, 2016, uh, we saw those dramatic uh, explosions taking place outside of Brussels Airport, as well as the Molenbeek train station there, uh, where 32 people or so were killed in terror attacks as well. And this happening on the brinks of that, the one-year anniversary. 
give us the mood and the sense of what is happening in Europe, specifically London, given how many uh, uh, terror attacks have taken place there. Uh, certainly we know that Britain has also been a heavy uh, recruiting ground for ISIS as well. Absolutely. And, and I think in, in London and in the UK, there, there is a feeling amongst the general population uh, that more terrorists are likely to come. Um, given that uh, many, many, um, many people have been to places like Syria, uh, northern Iraq, to fight with the terrorist organization. Um, and with, that, with that conflict, or those conflicts now coming to the end, um, there is a potential that uh, there could be terrorists moving back to the UK to potentially carry out attacks. So that is, that is a worry. That is, that is a, a general worry, I think, across the, the British population. Uh, but I, I think London and the UK is poten potentially more protected uh, than, than mainland Europe. Mainland Europe, it's easier to get weapons across mainland Europe. And actually, I was in Istanbul at New Year, and uh, we, we witnessed the, 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 um, the, the, the Riga shooting, which is a terrorist incident. That only took one terrorist with, a, with an AK-47 to kill scores of people. And it really, it really had a terrifying effect. Uh, and you'll see a, the knock-on effect or the look-ahead there in, in, in uh, Turkey is that they get fewer tourists. We are likely to see the same thing go on in London, in the UK, if terrorism attacks continue. Um, you know, unfortunately, hearing about three young schoolgirls being uh, injured, um, the look-ahead from that is, of course, perhaps, perhaps French, uh, French schools don't bring school kids to the UK to look at tourist sites because of the threat of terrorism. So you can see the impact in London. And a quick update, we're just getting seeing some reports that other media are reporting. In fact, uh, with regards to what happened, uh, police say the officer who was stabbed in the UK Parliament attack, in fact, died at the scene. That is according to the minister who gave uh, a resuscitation. So at this point, we don't know there were multiple officers who were attacked. We did see another person at that point we brought to you. It looked like that person was being whisked away. So we're not sure how many people or how many officers, as well as uh, uh, tourists or gender people in that area, were in fact uh, uh, part of this uh, the attack. Uh, we do know know that the uh, suspect police then later after that knife wielding man stabbed that officer we do know the police shot him so uh, quite a developing situation happening again uh, media in uh, uh, the UK are reporting that that police officer who was stabbed in fact has now died according to uh, local media there I understand uh, Palki as well as some of the school children who may be hurt in the, this terror attack as well yes three French school children and that on your screens uh, is the image of another uh, police officer if you're not wrong who's being taken away by paramedics there so so uh, more than it, one it, at this point it that could was be it could be more bad news uh, we may not know the full extent right. of uh, uh, this this attack and how many people may have been affected because if this one police officer is being wheeled away and uh, he he looks conscious uh, but this report that you're quoting says that uh, the officer who was stabbed died on the spot and there was an MP who tried to resuscitate him and uh, that obviously did not work uh, his injuries being so deep uh, these are reports that are still coming in of course uh, the very unfortunate case of these the three French school kids who have also sustained uh, uh, very severe injuries the French Prime Minister no less confirming that they were among those uh, who were injured in that car that rammed into the railings uh, uh, very close by and uh, while while we look at these developments of course uh, we, we, we we're asking all those questions as to how someone could go in with an eight-inch long knife, according right. to one eyewitness report, a, 40, uh, a man in his 40s, perhaps Asian-looking. This is an eyewitness account that we're getting. But these are, as, as we're saying, preliminary reports. It's uh, less than four hours since the first uh, report, 2.40 p.m. Uh, London time, is when the first report came in of gunshots being heard in this area, which is how emergency services responded. Oh, it's almost been about three hours now since all of this unfolded. Again, the, uh, the latest update again. Uh, uh, three French school children were hurt uh, near that area. The three students were aged about 15 or 16. They are from uh, Brittany in western France, according to a local paper there. Uh, this, uh, according to the Prime Minister, confirming this on social media. So uh, we've also described that area popular with tourists, many people just walking, doing their day-to-day -day business, and then this happening uh, in a very busy part of London, the last thing you would expect in London right. on a Wednesday afternoon. And... and uh Right. Uh, before before we take this discussion forward, let's uh, listen in from some eyewitnesses who saw the events unfolding, and this is what they told us. 
the so the car continued to drive all the way down, but down the bottom of the bridge, there is a yeah. two lane, so that there is a bus on the left hand side. Yeah. So you just continue between the bus and the pavement. And there was over 100 people on the pavement. Yeah. Just like we're standing here now, yeah. the car driving to us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then anything can happen. I don't know if people landed on the river, I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, the traffic was even slow, slow moving. I don't know if it, the cars and hit other people while they're running away yeah. from this yeah. car. I don't know what happened. Yeah. So the only thing I can do is just stop in the middle of the bridge and try to stop uh, the vehicle coming and then try to assist them and call the police and ambulance. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing I can do. Uh, Joel, if I could bring you in at this point, a terror attack is about, as I've been saying, inflicting damage, also making a statement. Symbolism is very big when we talk about uh, incidents like these uh, because that is what the terrorists aim at. And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, here they, they chose the location with a lot of care, one would say, right outside the British Parliament, inside the security cordon, in an area which is frequented by terrorists, uh, uh, and, and some of the most high-profile people in the city of London, three French school children, among others, who've sustained injuries. So as far as symbolism goes, as far as making a statement goes, uh, they may have inflicted a lot of damage. Yeah, and, and time will tell shortly, I'm sure, whether this was, in fact, a terrorist act or not. Um, it certainly has the hallmarks of it. And look at the impact that it's caused so far. One knife, one car has ground the center of the city to, to a standstill. Uh, the impact financially as well as to life will be huge. And looking ahead, potentially the impact to London uh, with the general um, feeling that people have living and working in London, the impact on those people, I, I'm sure, will be to the detriment. And potentially looking ahead further, uh, tourism uh, in the city of London could well be affected. And all that from, from maybe a small knife that was taken into a secure area and a car that was used on a bridge. All right, let's get some more reaction coming in from what is happening there on the ground. Let's listen into a more eyewitness uh, reaction. My mates to come over and have a coffee. I was on my break from my work. And um, all I could hear is that um, a, a, a loud shot, a gunshot or, some, or something. I was bang, 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 and then... Um, a quite scary um, situation happening there about three hours ago. Again, uh, two separate situations, one at the House of Commons, one at the Westminster Bridge, both near uh, a central part of London near Big Ben. Uh, we also uh, saw word that many people were uh, trapped inside the uh, London Eye, sort of uh, on lockdown mode as investigators combed the area. Many of the stations within that area also shut down. All of this as London, uh, the people there, tourists and those who work in and on the, around that area, are getting ready for a heavy evening rush hour traffic. At this point, many of those locations shut down or closed, going to make for a very messy commute, but police not taking any chances. In fact, we also heard from Scotland Yard a short while ago with updates. Let's listen into uh, what those investigators had to say. The Scotland Yard uh, uh, released a statement just a short while ago. Let's see if we can listen into. Uh, that reaction. All right, so we, we will try to get to that in just a second. Let me now go back to Joel Whitaker. Uh, Joel, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the traffic. I mean, London's traffic is probably never, uh, never friendly, but certainly on a day like this, a Wednesday afternoon, where many people are just out and about doing their day-to-day -day activities and businesses, tourists just scrolling around that area. but. Now going to probably take them several hours, in fact, to get out, given what is happening, but certainly expecting a heavy police presence. What do we expect to happen in the coming hours there in London as this investigation continues? Yeah, and, and in fact, actually, many, many businesses prepare for terrorist attacks. The police, the, the Met, the Metropolitan, or the, or the British um, London police, um, train uh, people, uh, corporations within London, how to deal in, uh, in the event of a terrorist attack. And, and part of that training is to stay firm, to stay in place, to stay where you are. Um, and so you'll find that actually a lot of the buildings within London will have provisions. Uh, so they're able to keep people there, keep them warm, and there'll be food and drink so they can be well fed and looked after. And essentially so that they can stay in place. Um, I'm pretty sure that the security service would prefer people to stay in place for certainly the short period of time whilst they attempt to secure um, those areas that have been affected by this, by this incident. 
Real quick as well, I'm just getting some uh, reaction coming in. Uh, David Cameron uh, speaking out. My thoughts are with the families of those injured and killed. Those seeking to attack our democracy with these uh, barbaric methods will never win. We're also seeing our uh, Angela Merkel, German, Germany's chancellor, saying she is shocked and stunned at what is happening there. U.S. President Donald Trump as well briefed in on the situation. So world reaction coming in as well with what is happening there in London at this point. Two people have died, dozens others injured, including uh, <coughs> three French children who were there uh, visiting the area. And uh, Prime Minister Theresa May is to chair a meeting of the government's emergency COBRA committee to discuss the immediate response uh, to, to this bloody incident at the Palace of Westminster. The COBRA committee brings together government ministers with senior officials of the emergency services and security, <coughs> I'm sorry, and intelligence agencies. And this meeting will be held in a briefing room of the cabinet office on Whitehall. Uh, the COBRA, of course, also coordinates the high-level response to serious incidents and has previously gathered uh, after terrorist atrocities, including the 7th July attacks on the London transport network and the murder of the soldier, Lee Rigby. Uh, of course, uh, this, is, uh, this is what was planned. And, uh, and, and uh, Joel, uh, this, this, these two attacks are only going to uh, make the agencies, the government, a look deeper into how they can prepare London because uh, because no matter how how fortified the city is it's always going to be a target it's uh, it's it, it stands for a lot of things in the free world and uh, this is this is a melting pot of cultures uh, there may be divisions there may be controversies but the fact is that people all over the world uh, come to London and it is going to be on the radar all the time you look at uh, what's going on in northern Iraq and Syria at the moment, certainly um, the so-called Islamic State are on the back foot there, and we'll want to, we'll want to be able to cause diversions uh, to pull the attention away from what's going on in Syria and uh, northern Iraq, which is essentially they are losing uh, by creating or by conducting attacks elsewhere. Uh, they'll certainly do that on mainland Europe, and as we've seen today, potentially they did it today in London. That still needs to be confirmed. Um, also, let's not forget other terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda. Uh, they've been quite quiet recently. They're, li they're likely to uh, be coming to the fore again soon. And again, they will be looking to then bring attention to their cause uh, by carrying out attacks on mainland Europe and certainly in the UK and in London. And, and I think uh, we know what is it uh, that, that's worrying uh, the agencies there. British media are reporting that the police are still looking for one more assailant in the London attack, and that is going to be a very worrying scenario for them Absolutely. if one person is still out on the loose. We know that there were two separate situations, so certainly they don't have both of those suspects at this point in custody. Uh, let me now quickly go over to uh, Weon's uh, Pratyush Dube standing by in the newsroom to get us reaction on how all of this unfolded, and uh, perhaps a reaction on social media, what people are saying now into its third hour as uh, uh, panic starts to spread, sort of uh, the reality sort of hitting, hitting uh, many people realizing how the extent of this terror attack. Pratyush, bring us up to speed. Well, absolutely, Archit. And, and in fact, I'm, I'm going to just pick up uh, from where Joel left off. Uh, the situation in northern Iraq is changing, and uh, one just needs to look at the way attacks have happened in, uh, in large parts of Europe, including just across uh, in the English Channel. In, in France, we have seen similar attacks, you know, attacks where people have used vehicles as, as instruments. We saw something uh, similar happen in Germany. Uh, but the point that uh, I would like to draw at this stage, and this just stepping back a little bit and saying, uh, is, is that, listen, I mean, talking from India, we know, we are familiar with this modus operandi. We have seen this happen. We saw this happen in 2001. Remember, there was a parliament attack in December 2001. Uh, uh, some people were injured in that, and, and that could have potentially been a catastrophic, uh, catastrophic attack uh, had that, uh, you know, succeeded in its motive, and that was prevented only because of Indian security agencies. We live next to Pakistan, which, uh, which the world has now recognized as an, as, as an epicenter and an exporter of terror. And India has coped up with uh, that terror for the last 10 years. Uh, much of what the West is now waking up to in terms of modus operandi, in terms of how motivated these attackers really are, in terms of, uh, of how they want to target uh, innocence and they don't think twice about uh, conducting attacks such as this. India's experienced firsthand, uh, and tragically so. And, uh, 
and we have learned our lessons from that and we are still learning those lessons so uh, Arshit at this stage you know as, as our coverage and you know we've been following these developments uh, second by second and getting our viewers updates right. it's important to look back uh, and at some stage uh, take a larger picture and uh, and perhaps try and understand the larger wider connections of this absolutely and really quickly recapping for those just joining in a quick update uh, US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson also expressing his condolences with the victims and what is happening police are still also looking for that one more suspect in the London attacks, according to British media. Right. Uh, Joe, Joel Whitaker, uh, Pratish Dubey, let me thank you both for joining us here. Also, Mandy Clark, our bureau chief in London, who's been getting us updates. This is a developing situation. One attacker might still be on the loose, and that is what is keeping the British security agencies and the police on their toes as they investigate this situation. We'll be on top of the story. All right, and that does it for this edition of We Are News. We'll, of course, have much more news and updates on our website, weonews.com, as well as our social media and digital platforms. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a good night.